Hello everyone, I hope you are doing well. In many prior martial art videos, I have mentioned that there are many important single movements considered fundamental practices in any internal styles of a martial art. I will use three videos, including this one, to introduce some of the important single movement exercises for each internal style. Today's video will focus on Xing Yi's single movement practice. But first, let's get high on tea. Today's tea is a Taiping Hou Kui, one of the best green teas in China. This tea is produced in the Hou Kong area in Huangshan City of Anhui Province, home to many other famous teas. Let's take a quick look at this tea. You may have noticed the big tea leaf of this special tea. Normally, a bigger tea leaf will provide a stronger bitter taste since tea chemicals such as tea polyphenols are present in higher quantities in bigger leaves that can contribute to the bitter taste. For example, poor tea has such a strong bitter flavor that it has to be either naturally or artificially fermented to make it suitable to drink. Taiping Hou Kui leaves are bigger than most poor tea on account of many factors such as tea bush species, soil quality, growing environment, and processing method. Regardless, Taiping Hou Kui is not only free of a bitter taste, but is also very fresh and delicious, which makes Taiping Hou Kui one of the top 10 teas in China. Now, let's talk about the history of Taiping Hou Kui. Historically, Taiping County was one of the main tea producing areas in Anhui Province. At the end of the Qing Dynasty, Wang Kuicheng, a famous tea farmer, invented a new tea processing method based on a famous local tea named Jian Cha or Sharp Shape Tea. By choosing one bud and one or two leaves as materials, along with modification of the previous Sharp Shape Tea processing method. Since the best leaves were picked in the Hou Kong area, the word Kui was chosen from the second word of Wang Kui Cheng, and the word Hou was chosen from the first word of Hou Kong, making the tea name Taiping Hou Kui ever since. By the way, Hou means monkey and Kui means king, and Taiping means peace, leading some people to misperceive Taiping Hou Kui as peaceful monkey kin. Actually, this tea has nothing to do with the monkeys. Hou or monkey is from the name of that area, so there may be monkeys in that region but it has nothing to do with the name of this tea. I recommend brewing Taiping Hou Kui in a glass cup so that you can appreciate the shape of the tea leaves. Normally, 3 grams of tea is enough for a cup. It is worth noting that the tea leaf stem should point downward and the leaf tip should point upward. The brewing method for Taiping Hou Kui is unique. First, fill a quarter of the cup with the water at 90 degrees Celsius. Next, add the tea leaves and wait for 30 seconds to 1 minute. Finally, add water at about 85 degrees Celsius for as long as you wish but at least cover the tea leaves for another 30 minutes or more. Then you can enjoy the first brew. Then add 30 seconds more for subsequent brews. Normally, you can only brew it for about three 
infusions each time. It's been really long since I first tried Taiping Houkui. Today, I have only a small bag of Taiping Houkui given by La Hong Marine, a student of mine in Montreal. He often lets me brew new teas for him when he is not sure of the best way to brew them. After we drank this tea together, he was impressed by the flavor of this tea, so he recommended I talk about it on video. So, many thanks to him for this nice gift to all of us. Taiping Houkui provides health benefits typically to green teas. Good quality Taiping Houkui is very expensive and is available in favors such as orchids, among others. People drink this tea mainly for its flavor. In recent years, Taiping Houkui production has increased a lot, but the demand is still very high. So, many tea farmers around Taiping County also began producing this tea. However, the flavor is different due to the differences caused by the growing conditions. A quick method to check the authenticity of this tea is that a good tea leaf is very strong and solid. Even so, it is not that easy to verify unless you are an expert. So, purchasing it from a reputable supplier is important. This is the tea leaf. <coughs> the tea leaf is very long. This is the tea decoction. Beautiful tea leaves and the very delicious and the fresh fragrance. <coughs> A great tea is worth tasting for all of us. Do let me know about your experience with Taiping Houkui in the comments. Now, let's move on to today's main topic. Topics covered in today's video include First, what is the single movement? Second, why single movement practice is important? Third, how many types of single movements are in Xing Yi? Fourth, how to practice Xing Yi single movement? Fifth, principles. Sixth, misperception. Seventh, demonstration. And eighth, takeaways. Without any further ado, let's get started. Topic 1. What is the single movement? After watching Chinese martial art demonstrations, people are very often under the impression that any style has many forms or routines. And it is even more interesting to see that many beginners perceive the level of the teacher based on how many routines the teacher knows. Very often, the development of a style may also be judged based on how many routines it has. While all of these impressions may be reasonable, even intuitive at first glance, if we analyze these perspectives in detail, they are just wrong. This is what I would like to explain further in this video. But first, Let's define what a single movement is in the internal style of a martial art. Briefly speaking, a single movement is just one or more basic movements that carry specific martial functions for training purposes. Compared to a single movement, a routine should have multiple movements. In other words, a single movement can be considered a building block of a martial art routine. A single movement can also be a form in itself or a part of a form. Usually, a routine has more movements than a form. A form has more movements than a single movement. If a form is very short or just consists of a few movements, it can also be considered a single movement under some circumstances. 
For example, I always call the five elements practices in Xingyi five small forms. Each five elements form consists of a few simple movements. Another example is the Chen Xiao Tai Chi's first routine or Yi Lu. There are 83 forms in the first routine, and each small form consists of a few single movements. So, single movements is the building block of a false practice. To a serious martial artist, focusing on single movement practice is the key to reaching a more advanced level. Then, why is single movement practice important? We need to first look into history, which brings us to the next topic. Topic 2 Importance of a single movement practice. Before answering this question, let me ask you another question. What came first with regard to bare hand training? Single movements or routines? The answer is very obvious. Of course, the single movements practice came first. The ancient military training documents do not contain any long routines. Instead, there are lots of single movements and some short forms, which are actually very short compared to the short routines we know today. So, Martial art practice originally focused on single movement practice, not routines. The reason is very simple. In ancient times, it was impossible to teach a military soldier a martial routine as we know and practice nowadays. Military soldiers back in the old days mainly underwent weapons training along with some basic bare hand training. Bare hand training only became increasingly popular in the last 700 years, starting around the Ming Dynasty. Bare hand training became especially popular in civilian training, in addition to military training. But still, martial art training, both military and civilian, had been focused on simple movements or short form training and not at all on long routines. For a very long period of time, routines or combinations of forms came much later, roughly around the end of the Ming Dynasty. Later, in the Qing Dynasty, about 400 years ago, with the further development of martial art practice, routines became longer and longer indicating the development of a Chinese martial art practice in terms of routine development. Bear in mind, I am only focusing on the development of the traditional martial art routine practice and not considering the contemporary wushu practice. Having looked at the historical background of a single movement practice and its main use in military and early stage civilian training, let's now study the importance of a single movement training from a technical perspective. Single movement training for an ancient military soldier was an effective and efficient way to gain the necessary battle skills. Likewise, single movement training is also a critical step for a martial artist to reach an advanced level. Let me explain. To understand this better, I'd like to introduce a popular martial art term, Chai Shou. Chai means to break down, and Shou means hand, which stands for martial technique. Put it together, Chai Shou means a step in martial art training in which a teacher breaks the routine down to every single movement and explains the application of every single movement, which, according to the traditional standard, is a critical step for any serious student. Sometimes, people also call it Chai Quan since Quan means fist, 
which was the same meaning as a hand or 手. In Tianjin, we used to call it Chai Shou in the old days, but nowadays Chai Shou and Chai Quan are both used depending on the region. Having understood what a Chai Shou is, it's obvious to see that the result of a Chai Shou or understanding the martial meanings of a single movement is the only way to master the martial skills for self-defense. In other words, a single movement is the carrier of any martial art routine meant for use in a self-defense situation. Also, it is almost impossible to practice martial applications by applying a routine as is without any change, with a training partner. Routines must be broken down into single movements and then practiced with the training partner in order to internalize the skills carried by every single movement of the routine or form. So, training with a partner requires someone to work on training a single movement repeatedly before reaching an ideal level. Also, it requires understanding what single movement should be practiced. So, how many types of a single movement exist in Xing Yi? That brings us to the next topic. Topic 3 Type of a single movement in Xing Yi. Before going any further, I'd like to let you know that the categorization method that I'm using here can also be applied to Tai Chi and Ba Gua, which will be introduced in the next two videos. Speaking from trainings and teaching experience, I categorize Xing Yi single movements into three categories based on their training functions. Those are first, flexibility and body conditional training. Second, martial power training, and third, martial technique training. Let me elaborate on them one by one. First category, flexibility and body conditional training. There are many single movements traditionally used for body conditional training. Some movements are aimed to improve body flexibility, some movements help improve physical endurance and so on. This type of a single movement training can be found in almost any style of a martial art and very often they share the same practices with each other. However, Xing Yi practice really emphasizes the achievement of a martial flexibility through a natural approach instead of a forced stretching approach the latter being applied in many other styles. For example, Li Cunyi, one of the most important Xing Yi masters in history, introduced in writing the natural stretching approach of Xing Yi. Second category, martial power training. Xing Yi is a style famous for its martial power. To reach this objective, some movements were taken from five element fist with some modifications. Some other traditional Xing Yi single movements aimed at training different types of martial powers, which are beyond what the five elements offered, and so on. This category is the key aspect of the three categories in terms of Xing Yi power development, since as I mentioned before that Xing Yi is the power releasing of Fa Jin based style. Without a powerful martial Fa Jin, then it won't be considered Xing Yi at all. This has always been the traditional standard and should be respected, or else it will be a violation of the traditional standard of training. There are many specific practices for this category which are beyond the scope of this video. By the way, I have actually introduced many such movements in prior videos. 
Please check out the demonstration section of my prior videos and you can practice the movements by yourself based on those demonstrations. Third category, martial technique training. It is worth noting that the procedure of Xing Yi training is to practice Fa Jin or power release first and then move on to its martial techniques. Of course, they can both be developed simultaneously, but at each stage, different practices will be focused on more than other parts, which is why in general, Xing Yi trains martial power first and then martial techniques. So, basically, the single movements for this category are taken from 12 animal forms since the 12 animal forms were created aiming for martial application purposes. In the old days, each animal form had a few single movement practices in order to gain different martial skills since each animal form represented different martial functions. Also, each martial technique may require different type of the of flexibility of different body parts and different type of body strength may be needed in order to practice the 12 sets of martial techniques correctly. Furthermore, the different martial applications require different types of martial power, which is normally a combination of skills gained through the second category. Martial technique without martial power will be useless, and martial power without a related technique will place the practitioner in a disadvantaged position. So, the integration of skills gained in all three categories of single movement practice is the key to reaching an advanced level of training. So, I recommend you understand the differences between each category of practice. Figure out which part is the most important to you and stick with it until you master it before switching to another category. Please pay attention to all the three categories and practice them all, and with time, you will see your obvious progress. Topic 4 How to Practice Xing Yi Single Movements After understanding the source of the single movements used in Xing Yi, a practitioner has to figure out what type of practices are most suitable to each individual situation. For example, a practitioner with the weak bike should ideally focus on single movements for training the bike. Of course, identifying the focus area for a practitioner is best done by a qualified teacher with a lot of teaching experience. High quality practice is just not possible without high quality teaching and training. In the process of training, the practitioner and the teacher also have to be cautious to avoid inappropriate training that would otherwise lead to unnecessary injuries. Also, for any single movement practice, especially those that involve high speed and intensive power release, a practitioner should follow the step-by-step -step principle. First, get the movement precisely, then add speed, and eventually, both martial power and the martial technique will be naturally achieved. It is also important to know that it is not necessary to train for a very long time for each session. Speaking from experience, even a 15 minutes intensive training session can do wonders for your practice. Prolonged incorrect training may create some injuries that will eventually hinder progress. It is very important and I hope you remember it. Again, you should always train different single movements chosen from each of the three categories so that 
your overall practice will be improved instead of overemphasizing any of them. Neglecting one category practice will, in fact, slow down the progress of the other categories as well. So, try them together each time but only focus on a few movements in each training session. In other words, the balance between the quantity and the quality of each single movement training is the key to great training. Before moving to the next section, I'd like to remind you that in any martial art practice, you should train yourself with purpose and understand the function and the benefits offered by single movement chosen from the three categories. That is very important for making tangible progress in training. So, what are some important principles of a Xing Yi single movement practice? That brings us to the next topic. Topic 5 Principles of a Xing Yi single movements. Understanding some important principles can help practitioners deepen their understanding of this topic. Let's recall the three categories of single movements according to their functions. First, flexibility and body conditioning. Second, martial power. And third, martial technique. I created a proverb to be used as a principle for Xing Yi single movement training. The proverb is Chen Jin Ba Gu Yao Man Lian. Lian Xi Fa Li Yao Kuai Lian. Gong Fang Ji Shu Yao Jing Run. Translation Slow movement training for flexibility and body conditioning. Fast movement training for martial power. Clean and precise movement training for martial technique. End translation. Let me explain. First, for flexibility and body conditioning, the movement should be slower. We all know that slower movements are very effective compared to fast ones to get a good stretch in the body. This approach can not only prevent unnecessary injury but can also provide long-lasting stretching effects. In Xing Yi practice, there are many opening and closing movements that involve body structure expansion. To reach the optimal result, slower motion is better. With time, you will achieve natural flexibility. So, you should slow down your movements when you are working on flexibility and body conditioning. Second, for martial power. The movement should be fast. Body power training without high speed will effectively be just a stretching or body conditioning exercise. Martial power cannot be practiced without high speed either. So, being able to execute the movement at a high speed is the prerequisite for Xing Yi power training. Speed is the key differentiator between the first and the second categories of movements. Of course, you have to practice any high speed movements step by step as I have mentioned in the previous section. Third, for martial technique, the movement should be clean and precise. The word clean and precise in Chinese martial art practice have specific meanings. Clean in Chinese is gan jing, and precise in Chinese is zhun quan. Being clean in martial art practice means that movement is done without missing or losing any details. Well, Precise means movement can reflect its intended martial objectives or martial function. These two words are used to describe one practice that meet the training standard. So, being clean and precise is the guiding principle of martial technique training, which of course 
requires a lot of training. In the interest of time, I will cover more principles in the future video. Now, let me clarify a common occurring misperception. Topic 6 Misperception Single movement practice, even though a critical step in the internal style of a martial arts training, has been widely neglected in the community in both China and the West, which is one of the major reasons for so many martial artists not having the correct Xing Yi power. Lacking specific knowledge is one reason, which along with some other reasons, especially misperceptions, are the root cause of this issue as well. For example, a common misperception is, a Xing Yi routine contains all the necessary techniques, so as long as I practice the routine, I would get the self-defense skills. Let me debunk this now. Yes, routines are created for practice purposes. However, please do not forget that the major reason for a routine is to help a practitioner memorize each movement in said routine. Also, and very often, many routines were created for demonstration, especially those routines created in the last 50 years. I have to say that any routine practice would be useless without analyzing its martial function, which is the source and the foundation for the practice of a single movement. As explained in the first section, a single movement is the carrier of a martial function, not the routine. The benefit of working on Chai Shou or breaking down the martial techniques is the most important step for any practitioners to gain self-defense ability and the single movement practice is the path toward it. So, only practicing routines and imagine that routine practice will provide many martial benefits is just wrong. So, Please work on single movements and you will see noti and you will notice progress in a very short time. Now, let's move on to the demonstration section. Topic 7 Demonstration. In today's video, I will demonstrate a Xing Yi single movement exercise. This movement is used to train the splitting force and the elbow strike. It is from swallow form. One exercise. <coughs> Topic 8 Takeaways. First, what is the single movement? Single movement is the building block of forms and routines in martial art training. Every single movement in traditional styles has a specific martial functions. Second, why is the single movement practice important? Historically, single movement practice is the foundation of a form and routine practice. Technically, single movement carries is the martial functions applied in a self-defense situation. Third, how many types of single movements are present in Xing Yi? I classified Xing Yi single movement practices into three categories for first, flexibility and body conditioning, second, Xing Yi power development, and third, to develop of specific martial techniques. Fourth, how to practice the single movements in Xing Yi. You should always train different single movements chosen from each of the three categories so that your overall practice will be improved instead of overemphasizing any of them. Fifth, principles of a single movement in Xing Yi. I created a proverb to serve as an important principle to practice the three categories of Xing Yi single movements. Chen Jin Ba Gu Yao Man Lian, 
，练习发力要快练，攻防技术要精准。Translation: Slow movement for flexibility and body conditioning. Fast movement for muscle power. Clean and precise movement for martial technique and translation. Sixth misperception. A very common misperception is that Xing Yi routine contains all the necessary techniques. So as long as I practice the routine, I would get the self-defense skills. Remember, this is the misperception. You need to break down the routine practice. Into single movements and understand and train them individually to achieve self-defense skills. Make sure to check out the demonstration section to get a better idea of Xing Yi single movement practice. That concludes today's video. Thanks for watching. See you next time and enjoy your practice.